Welcome to Invictus Motors. My name is Bashir Zahir. Today we're going to be reviewing this Range Rover Vogue. This is the V8 engine in this and the purpose of the video is to kind of just get right into it and just explain why you should buy the V8 rather than the V6. The V8 with a 4.4 litre engine, just the performance it offers you, how it's like to handle and just the overall capability of what you could expect out of the V8 uh, as opposed to having had quite a few V6s and why we tend to shy away from the V6s. Let's get this opened up and just give you a brief tour underneath the bonnet. Well, the V8, firstly, you get a lot more torque. Uh, the BHP is better and the 0 to 62 miles per hour times are also uh, a lot better. And what would be most surprising that you also get about the same miles per gallon, the same MPG on the V8 as opposed to the V6. And overall, this being a big brute of a car, it does need the V8 ideally because in comparison, you've got to have this as a must off in something like this because it's a luxury item, it's a luxury good. BHP wise, the V8 4.4 litre engine in the Range Rover Vogue, this is on a 2013 plate, produces 340 BHP. The torque is a staggeringly high 700 Newton meters of torque because they have an absolutely phenomenal um, towing <laughs> capability. The 0 to 62 time, the 0 to 62 miles per hour time is 6.9 seconds and the top speed is 135 miles per hour. And that hopefully should give you enough info getting a V8 rather than a V6 because the V8 also doesn't strain the engine uh, as much as a V6 would, uh, purely down to the fact that it needs to carry and move a lot of weight. So it just makes an overall more sense uh, from the longevity. It being a diesel, the V8 could do comfortably 150, 200,000 miles as long as you do the regular servicing that is required. And when it comes down to the servicing, this is a one owner from new and the service history is a combination of main dealer and specialist. So it's got a full main dealer, uh, it's got a full uh, service history. Bonnet shop, what can you expect? from an appearance point of view. The V6 and the V8 from an appearance point of view isn't very different, but the V8 tend to be slightly better spec overall, purely down to the fact that somebody buying a V8 has just got that initial bit of extra capital. Therefore, they don't mind going that extra mile specking everything they can to make it the ideal dream car that they're going to keep for circa 10 years, which is exactly what the current customer that we purchased it from had it for 10 years. It's finished is in this beautiful Santorini black combined with the 10 spoke 20 inch Land Rover alloys. You've got the side folding side door mirrors, which are great, especially if you're going to be going through narrow parking areas, etc. You've got the keyless entry uh, exit system as well. And the contrast between what you see here in this sort of palladium gray color with the alloys, I think it stands out really well. This also has the beige interior and right from the get-go, it looks absolutely mega combined with the LED rear lights at the back that sort of scoops around to the side of the car. It looks, I think, just the part. You've got split boot in the Vogue, both in the V6 and the V8. Great to actually have um, that extra bit of space, especially if you're going to be having kids or if you're going to be using it for things like camping, etc. You've got a full size spare at the back as well. That full size spare seems like it's hardly been used or not used at all. Let's shut that down. Let's take you on to the inside. It's finished in this very gorgeous Windsor beige leather interior. Uh, you've got the armrest, which looks spot on and what i love is this dark oak wood interior um can't remember the exact wood that's been used but this is probably one of the best wooden interiors that i've seen it's not cliche like as what you expect in the cars of the 90s or the 80s i think it's a lot more modern a lot more subtle you've got to look at it to actually realize it's wooden you've got front heated seats and you've got the Bluetooth mobile connectivity, both for, mu for mu music, telephone calls, navigation, DAB radio, you name it. It's only done 67,000 miles. The heated uh, steering wheel is also another great thing to have, combined with the fact this has cruise control, memory seat settings, so you can program your two keys um, uh, so that just the seats you know, go forward or back exactly to the specification you need. A must have is the glass roof 
That front section of the glass roof actually opens up. It's quite cold, didn't want to open it up as we'll be taking it for a test drive next. Let me just show you the back of it. This is the back of the Range Rover Vogue. Again, you've got the rear seats also finished in the beige Windsor leather interior. You've got this as well. If you've just got two passengers, nice to have. The rear passengers will have their own climate control zone as well. The glass roof makes it very nice space to be in at the back. And underneath the hand rest right here is a fridge as well, as well also AUX and USB connectivity. Let's get behind the steering wheel, take it out for a spin, and hopefully just kind of tell you what it's like to drive, how it handles, and just overall what you expect from it. And right from the get-go, you don't need to really press the accelerator pedal to get any traction, any you know, kinetic movement in terms of going forward. The V8 does it for you. It takes care of that side of things. And that is absolutely brilliant, especially, you know, when you're actually pulling out of junctions and just the situations that you can also end up be, especially if you're going to be driving around the Vogue in and around the city or in traffic. And on the motorway, as I've said, the V8 gives you equally as good MPG as the V6, if not in some instances, I would say better. Now, just the overall driving and just how it's meant to handle, this is ultimately the, the, the most luxurious car you could probably find on the road uh, with the way the air suspension is set up, just the performance, the interior, and how comfortable it can be to find anything in comparison to the, the level of comfort that you find in this. Uh, I think one would have to be really stretching their head quite hard to beat this for comfort. When we're doing any sort of long trips, whether we're going for a hiking trip to the south of Wales or Scotland or even collecting cars and we need two people to go so we can bring one car over to the business. This is the marquee, this is the go-to cars for us. Because you don't, you don't feel the two, three hundred miles journey that you do in one of these. You feel fresh when you get out of it. And having experimented in the past with actually trying out a V6, it's in no way, form or shape compar comparatively closer um, just from comfort, from driving, economy, okay. It's, it's still equally uh, a similar car, similar spec, but this just takes it up a level. Now this V6, uh, so this V8 that we have right now in stock, it's done 67,000 miles, it's one owner from new. Uh, it's got a full service history. It drives and handles incredibly well. It being now 10 years old, you wouldn't think in terms of the styling of it, in terms of how it looks, that this is 10 years old. And you can find some really battered, used and abused examples, but this is certainly probably one of the best um, examples of it. And something that I wasn't actually aware of until when we collected this from our previous keeper is the um, headphones. They, from factory, are, I'm not sure if there are an optional spec item, but you get these lovely headphones with it from factory, and I do appreciate the the one owner from New actually giving us these headphones. They're a nice touch. Um, you know, somebody could have just kept it, but you know what? What, what will you do with it? Uh, uh, nice to have if you want to just be in your own zone, put your headphones on, listen to your music, or telephone calls. It's brilliant. Now. The whole video is all about the performance uh, in comparative what you get between the V8 and the V6 in the Range Rover Vogue. It's got the 4.4 litre engine as opposed to the V6 from memory. I think they've got the 3 litre engines. The 4.4 litre engine produces 340 bhp in the V8, 700 newton meters of torque, and the not to 62 miles per hour in 6.9 seconds. The top speed is 135 miles per hour. That's just what the um, overall performance figures are like. Now in terms of this display that you have here, 
this is quite handy to have these are the two side cameras actually the first button that are pressed but for some reason they're not giving us the image uh, of the two side cameras it did when I act actually had the vehicle parked um, you've got an option of self parking or looks for a parking spot front and rear parking sensors including the fact that this also has the rear view camera the home screen basically takes you to this menu where you can select audio, navigation, telephone connectivity. You can select your home destination, take me home. And here, if you phone, navigation, let's just turn that on. That's your navigation system. And your audio and video connectivity there as well. And if we actually lift up this lid there, you've got a fridge underneath the armrest, as well as aux USB connectivity there this button here is the button for the seats this is by pressing it you can literally press that button to select the heated seats to get hot it's the view from the rear view camera very handy to have if I press this it just gives me a different view as opposed to the guided lines at the back also has a pretty good turning circle in my experience owning driving these for over you know five six thousand miles in a space of two three months because of all the driving that we do they are incredibly incredibly comfortable to drive what about the maintenance side of it you know some people would knock the Range Rovers for just poor build quality I think that's absolutely nonsense I think from memory, these brand new are about a hundred thousand pounds. Okay, they're mass produced. One or two will have issues here and there. And that's to be expected, even from a marquee brand like a Porsche or a Ferrari. Just the, in terms of the longevity, in terms of the long-term maintenance of it, the key item is just the general maintenance uh, and the servicing. As long as you stay on top of that, tires, discs, pads, having your oils changed, filters changed hardly anything will go wrong on them I mean we on the odd Range Rover Vogue worst case scenario have done default changes or control arms but never anything like major suspension components you know major engine items because key is to actually buy well that is the first strategy of it is to actually buy the right car buy one that is well maintained buy one that is well looked after and if you can get that right, the rest will take care of itself. That's it from our point of view on the test drive. Why buy the V8 as opposed to the V6? And hopefully I've given you a pretty strong argument uh, to buying one of these. And uh, if you've got any questions about this V8 Vogue in our stock, feel free to contact us. It is currently available. I mean, we're in sort of mid-January. Um, it's not yet been listed, hopefully, at some point today. Um, and just wanted to say a massive thank you in advance for actually watching our videos. Don't forget to subscribe. We make money out of YouTube, which gets donated to a UK-registered charity. Uh, they use that money to build water wells in Afghanistan. And also, we are currently in the process of building a school out there. As a country that's in dire need of any extra bit of help or assistance it can get and I'm from Afghanistan so it feels very close to my heart so we call it a wrap thank you and see you next time bye bye